Plenty of animals have pretty privilege, and no other animal has ridden that train further than a gutterfly. I did not misspeak, this halo effect insect is an abomination with wings, and if that offends you, you could die in a field today, corpse still warm, last thing you might see is a bloodthirsty butterfly swarm. Many butterflies drink blood, among other things. Butterflies will do this thing called mud puddling, and essentially, it's using that built-in straw called a proboscis to suck the juices out of organic matter to farm free nutrients. Trench flies usually get it out the mud, but they'll also suck on rotting plants, feces, and dead bodies. You don't even have to die. If you pull over to the side of the road to relieve yourself and come back hours later, you may find a flutter of fiends feeding on your urine. See, now you thought they just used flowers as fuel, and that is true. The problem is, just a diet of sugar water would leave butterflies without key minerals they need. One of those minerals is sodium, and they'll go to extreme lengths to secure it, even irritating the eyes of reptiles to drink the tears. Crocodile tears have used to someone. Of course, butterflies taste through receptors on their feet, so one landing on you doesn't make you a Disney princess. It makes you a sodium seasoned rest stop for a flamboyant fly that's just using you until it gets what it wants and moves on to the next mark. Cause butterflies are f boys with wings, and that is not a joke, because their mating behavior is out of pocket for something with its PR, but one thing at a time, we'll get to that. But the only thing more questionable than what some butterflies eat is what some people will do to find them. The Purple Emperor is a beautiful, ethereal muse to any entomophile. It's also a death merchant that avoids flowers, instead preferring rotting animal flesh and fecal waste. That hasn't stopped folks from seeking out this corpse fly, and here are some of the things people have used to attract them. Rotting fish, fermented shrimp paste, stinking bishop cheese, dog poop, roadkill, very used diapers, and in one case, a trailer of pig poop. But according to longtime enthusiasts, one of the biggest turn-ons for a purple emperor is urine-soaked fox poop. I don't think that's a coincidence, because not only are butterflies fine to mine for liquid gold, science says they might prefer the pee of carnivores, specifically mountain lions, to that of humans or cows. So when you say they prefer cougar pee, we're talking about in more ways than just cloudy with a chance of storming Daniels. But butterflies are opportunists that'll take them from anywhere, and Russian experiments have shown that vampire moths, yeah them's a thing, are able to use hook-shaped tongues to drill through human skin and feed on the blood. But that was just an experiment. To you watching this, a vampire moth is no risk that we know of. That being said, butterflies are not what you think they are, and the more you learn about them, the more you understand why Spongebob turned his town into an Avengers end credit after experiencing its mugshot once. The funniest part is, the close-up they crashed out over was actually a horsefly, probably because they knew an actual butterfly would have ruined the animal for an entire generation. Because like I said, no animal has had better PR than a mosquito in drag, in fact even their name might be a cover-up. A popular theory is that their original name was actually Flutterby, and the global game of telephone ended predictably. It's much more likely that it came from the Dutch word butterscheiter, or butter sh** is apparently a butterfly bowel movement looks like a brick of butter. It's not 100% confirmed, but believing otherwise goes against my narrative, so I'ma disregard it. Insane intro aside, what is it that makes a butterfly? Cause I wasn't kidding, if you're like me, butterflies are not what you think. Like on a scientific level, Lepidoptera represents the order of flying insects that are, well, basically moths and anything that looks like a moth. Butterflies are a relatively small superfamily that's less than 10% of the Lepidoptera party, with a small contribution of at most 20,000 species. Everything else is a moth. They go to war, moths clear. There are also skippers, which are technically butterflies, but were such an out of character butterfly that science thought it was its own thing. Long story short, it's a butterfly that heavily borrows from the moth's playbook, especially when it comes to flying. Which gets straight up confusing when you realize there's an animal called a moth butterfly that skippers have nothing to do with. But basically, American moth butterflies are that weird, only ever see during the holidays type of family of butterfly that were so weird and mothy, it kept them from the butterfly function until recently. Boring high school sciencey stuff aside, it's a moth's world. Butterflies are just a small part of it. I say that because there will be mentions of moths in this video, and I just know I'd get my Lepidoptera pass checked if I didn't make that clear. Because there's a lot of evolutionary headassery going on with moths, and I'm not about to leave it out on a oh technicality. So yeah, butterflies are not what you think even in an artistic sense. That butterfly's dead. If I ask you all to draw a butterfly, chances are 95% of you would draw this, and you would be illustrating a corpse. For some reason, butterflies are often drawn the same way dead ones are pinned and displayed by those who collect them. We basically did a blobfish to the butterfly, and immortalized their death pose. A butterfly might hit this pose at some point in its natural life, but most times a butterfly looking like this isn't. But it was. 
My condolences to anyone watching this and realizing they have a dead winger tattooed on them. So while we did do butterflies dirty there, butterflies don't need help doing that themselves with the things they eat and that really starts as caterpillars. As you know, butterflies have many forms and the caterpillar's job is to eat as much as physically possible. Caterpillars have the type of greed they warn you about in the bible. No other animal reaches such biblical levels of gluttony. A caterpillar can eat 200 times its birth weight in the first two weeks, which can become 1,000 times its weight in only two months. Now those numbers probably don't hit as hard as a North American silk moth. No animal alive eats more relative to body size than a marauding moth, which will eat 86,000 times its body weight in less than two months of life. To keep that same pace, your seven pound baby would have to scarf 273 metric tons of mass or 601,861 pounds worth of semilac. Pot of greed. Caterpillars eating constantly does have a consequence and is them being in a perpetual state of dropping bombs. The scientific name for caterpillar waste is frass, and these hedonists pile on the frass by the metric hecton. If you live in the area code of the gypsy moth, then you've likely woken up to the sound of heavy rain with no water, because it was actually the sound of caterpillars mass flooding folks with frass from above. To be fair, if you could get all your lifetime bathroom visits out the way in only a few weeks, in that time, the toilet would never not be attached to your cheeks. But another consequence of caterpillars unloading enough bricks to rebuild the city of Gotham, or Newark, is predators like wasps will track them down by following the brown brick road. So many caterpillars can ballistically launch their own fecal matter like a cannonball. The skipper caterpillar can shot put its own product up to 40 times its own body length, which is the equivalent of a man blowing it out the other end over 200 feet. Mind you, the world record for shot put is 77. Caterpillars shoot the sh but ain't no back talk, and the chances a habitual slinger shoots one into your mouth is low. Science won't let it be zero. But they don't always shoot it only because caterpillars will also use their poop to manipulate the very plants they eat. Plants don't just get munched on all day and just take it. They'll produce chemicals to repel plant predators like caterpillars. Not only that, but those chemicals are like a cry for help, where one plant being eaten can warn others with its aromatic alarm bell. The catch is, they can only react to one threat at once, and the armyworm caterpillar exploits this by dropping deuces that tricks the plant into thinking it's being attacked by a fungal infection. The plant can only deal with one problem at a time, and while it's crashing out trying to fight a fungus that isn't there, the army worm has free reign to eat it along with any other plant taking a cue from it. That's diabolical. The plant's get back is devious. Some plants can release a chemical that turns caterpillars into cannibals. Apparently, methyl jasminate is such an insult to a caterpillar's palate that when plants would produce it as a defense, the caterpillars decided they'd rather eat each other instead. Simply not eating is not an option, and the moment a plant becomes less palatable is the moment you see a bunch of sin worms start ripping into each other. Although in the plant's defense, caterpillars don't need much to turn on each other, and the moment caterpillars realize there isn't enough milkweed to go around, they'll start aggressively headbutting each other to steal food. So caterpillars don't always choose violence, unless it's food, then the bulk worm's ready for war. But the reason the hungry caterpillar is more of a curse than a kid's book is because they'll need all that energy for metamorphosis. And if the end game of that wasn't a butterfly, we'd probably look at the whole process differently. You know it starts when hell freezes over and the caterpillar does something wildly out of character. It stops eating. If you keep watching, you'll witness the caterpillar split its skin and then pull its flesh suit down and then writhe around like a foot trying to emancipate itself from a gym sock until the skin suit falls and reveals a gooey casing called the chrysalis. So a quick rundown, the chrysalis is the shell booger the switch up happens in. Pupa usually refers to the life stage this happens in and the cocoon you may remember hearing about are the silk cases many moths will make as a chrysalis substitute. Some moths don't cocoon, but no butterfly does. Now the process of metamorphosis is beautiful and has also been associated with rebirth. It might be associated with something else if nature removed the modesty chamber and let you see what actually happens. Inside the chrysalis, the caterpillar releases enzymes to dissolve its tissues, basically digesting itself into almost soup. If you cut the chrysalis, a mess of caterpillar slushy would spill out. The only things that don't turn into Shrek Fest are imaginal discs, and what they are basically whatever they need to be. They're like the blueprint to their adult life, with discs for every butterfly body part like wings, eyes, antennae, and they lay dormant in the constantly eating caterpillar like a sleeper cell. The only thing stopping it from activating is the juvenile hormone in the caterpillar, and the same way neutering neophytes kept castrato sounding young, the hormone Peter pans the caterpillar and keeps them young so they can keep eating like nature's favorite feedy. Once the hormone drops, the caterpillar pupates and those sleeper cell imaginal discs use the protein-fueled former caterpillar to fuel rapid cell division. The process isn't one-to-one -one for every caterpillar, but that's pretty much the spark notes. Monarch butterflies occupy a chrysalis anywhere from 10 to 14 days. Some, like desert orange tips, will wait years, some say even close to a decade, 
for the right conditions to pop out. Another fact is that adult butterflies can remember part of their lives as caterpillars, even with their time as butterfly broth in between. Science shows that caterpillars conditioned to avoid certain smells through electrical shocks go on to show the same discernment as flying adults. I feel like that's way cooler than people give credit for, but it's also possible they do remember their past lives of greed, which might be why many moths don't have mouths altogether. Okay, that's a joke. Well, n not the no mouth thing. The Luna moth is only alive for as long as its caterpillar past ate for. But the reason is because the same way a caterpillar's job is only to eat, once they can fly, their main priority is getting laid. Flutterbys have one job, and it's to mate, and some moths take the sentiment literally. Cause a closed mouth won't get fed, but no mouth might get he- Oh, oh, my bad, I mean her abdomen. Touching abdomens is how butterflies mate, and the process is much less innocent than you want to believe. Yeah, it's about that time. Almost every messed up thing about butterflies comes down to them catching a date. Butterflies will use several factor authentication like sound, color, even flight patterns to choose a mate, but the real secret sauce are pheromones. Males use pheromones like a calling card, and many moths and butterflies have a hair pencil to help get the message out further. Also called the Coromata, it's a scent organ that inflates and fans out pheromones to anyone who might be interested. And with over 180,000 species of moths and not moths, someone was bound to take it too far. And Kratinos Genghis shows you just how far love makes some guys go. If it's any solace, a horny male moth can't fly with its Coromata out. Life finds a way. Also, yes, Australia. Males use the food they collected as caterpillars to help fuel pheromones, which is why it's often the males you'll see puddling the juices out of a compost pile, especially since the chemicals are more for just attracting mates. After mating, male butterflies will often spray their partners with an anti-aphrodisiac that makes the female completely unattractive to other males. That wouldn't even be that bad, but parasites like wasps clock the method, so now I got wasps tracking a recently deflowered female by her anti-aphrodisiac after spray and hitching a ride on her, waiting until the female lays eggs so the stowaway can parasitize them. The end game is her larva getting eaten from the inside by a brood of xenomorphs. Luckily in studies, less than 10% of wasps were successful, but that's what an insecure man can do to you. But some males don't stop at man repellent. Some went ahead and invented chastity belts. Few males will excrete this weird waxy substance designed to plug up his partner's female parts, which physically seals her off from other males. It's a literal breeding block, but that leaves a problem. It's in the female's best interest to mate with as many males as possible, but it also behooves the male to brute force monogamy, which has led to this evolutionary arms race with females flexing increasingly harder to plug junk and males producing even more blobs of scabby petroleum jelly. But that is far from the most felonious way males buff their chances. Some people have experienced the rare occurrence of two butterflies in one chrysalis. Really, it's the scene of a crime. Some, like the zebra longwing, won't even wait until the female is fresh out the pupa stage. As the female is getting ready to break out of the chrysalis, a gang of males can swarm her and start fighting for position. The winner then rips into her chrysalis to mate with her while she's still stuck in the stage. There's a term for this. Some call it pupa arrow. Now insects can't really consent, so maybe that's too far. So forced copulation is a nicer way to describe it. But the rising female has zero choice in the matter when she basically gets spawn camped and that just feels illegal. Still just butterflies, right? But when you only have a couple weeks to live, you pull out all the stops to make sure your genes don't pass tense with you. And it's why male butterflies are more likely to suck the sweat off your back. Not only do those nutrients help form pheromones, during mating, males will pass off nutrients to the female as a sort of consummation gift that helps the eggs, and in some species, the males will transfer 25% of their body weight in the process. Which explains why male butterflies are crackheads when it comes to some mineral, and some males take it so far, Science had to invent a whole nother word for what they do. Because in North Sulawesi and Indonesia, milkweed butterflies were seen harassing, scratching, and eventually sucking the juices out of caterpillars. The same claws they use to scratch the sweet out of leaves, they'll use on a caterpillar until their internal essence spills out. And at that point, the butterfly treats its own kind like a juice box, which led to the term kleptopharmacology. Because they're not exactly preying on the pillars, more than just stealing their substance, and a lot of times the caterpillars actually survive. Although knowing that they keep their memories as adults, probably not without PTSD. I think I'd rather die. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. If you come away from this video thinking less of butterflies or even hating them, then I failed at my job. I never want to be the reason y'all hate an animal when there isn't an animal alive that I hate. 
There's no cutaway. I, I meant that. The butterfly didn't ask to be put on a pedestal. If learning more about them ruins them, that is a failure of your own expectations. And to steal a line from friend of the channel, Hank Green, butterflies aren't here to please us. Their beauty is an accident, and we are merely spectators. Especially when the monarch population is down 99%. That's the scariest thing about them. Also, I want to thank y'all so much for 4 million subscribers. I've said it before, but y'all have changed the trajectory of my life in ways you cannot even begin to imagine. I got a lot more stuff planned, promises to keep. I did not forget the checks my Big Mouth wrote this year. But for now, as a thank you, I'll be doing a video on whatever the top comment says. Within reason. Within reason. Anyway, been a minute since I said this, but drink water, hug your mother, save the butterflies fam, and moths too, and I'ma see y'all in the next one. Probably the last one of this year to be honest.